There's my eyeballs. Hello, everybody. Today, I'm playing a little catch up. We've had kids graduating, schools getting out naturally, fishing season is here. We've been traveling, doing a big annual fishing trip. Dogs always barking when I'm talking. It's just been a real hectic time of year and I wouldn't change it for anything. But today, although I hurried it, I want to show you the receiving and recleaning of the African animals that came back from our trip last year. So this is just one animal that stayed with me, this warthog. Um, just a bitchin' critter, and I wish I had more time to go through everything. But I want to give you an idea, if you have animals that are coming back from Africa, what you'd need to do. Um, it took an entire year, so those animals have been cleaned and then shrink-wrapped. And all that heat and oil and everything will just naturally make any skull look poor. So when I got them back, I reboiled what I could. Many of those animals were damaged beyond repair. Uh, just because I don't want to knock the the way they do things over there, but it's a very crude, very go-get-it method. They go through 10 times the animals that we go through over there. So some of them were hard to do, uh, and then, you know what? I won't spoil it. I'll get right into the video. Thank you for watching. You're never gonna believe what got here today. Everything from Africa just showed up. Let's unbox it. just one small crate of everything I cannot wait to show you all the stuff that's in here check this out y'all there is 52 different animals laying right there on the ground now every one of those animals was utilized to the fullest I personally got to experience the meat of most of those animals Everything else, the hides were sold into industry, the meat was sold into town, and nothing went to waste. It's a very special place over there in South Africa. So just to get right to it, everything that comes back into the States goes through a dip and pack process. Essentially, it's a sterilization process necessary to export any raw animal parts across international borders. The Department of Economic Affairs and Environmental Tourism in South Africa worked with the Department of U.S. Fish and Wildlife to create a criteria for these animals to come back over. You can't get it here without it going through there. It just helps protect us all from any sort of uh, bug transfer or anything of that nature. When I opened up these shrink wrap packages, I found a lot of dead beetles and larvae and things like that. And that's the nature of it. So don't be alarmed. The idea is to kill all that stuff. Now we were over there on several different safaris. So several people in the group were shooting the same animal, meaning same species. So I had to go through and identify this kudu skull goes with these kudu horns. And they did a very good job of marking that. But as I opened them and cleaned them, I wanted everything to match up and be just right because I got to distribute these to four different individuals. So day one, I got everything cut out of the packages. I got the horns kind of slid in position, make sure everything matched. And here's a quick look at what we harvested. Monkey, Dusty, Spring Hair. Bushbuck, Diker, Steenbuck, Mountain Reed Buck, more Dikers, lots of Springbuck, Bless Buck, back there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Bush Pig, Warthogs, Eland, Waterbuck, and Yala, Cape Buffalo. Kudu, Gemsbuck, Impala, Blue Wildebeest, and in the very back there, Red Hartebeest. Just an incredible, incredible display of critters. Now this particular film 
is going to be a lot of me talking. I didn't have a lot of time to set up cameras and do my thing. And I'm only making an excuse because I had 50 some animals laying on the floor and a big party happening at my house in two days. And my wife said, no, sir, get it done and get it gone. So that's why this is hurried. Now, everything came over with an identifying tag. If there was two pieces, say two horns and a skull cap, that was three tags. If it was a pig with the top of his head and the bottom of his jaw, two tags. So I had to cut that off. And all those wires are made of like a carbon steel. So they naturally, they've rusted. So I had to clean that up a little bit. And I went ahead and instead of using a heavy resin or a Bondo, I used silicone to re-adhere horns and to fill tusks. The difference with silicone is if somebody wants to mount that animal, say in a year or two years, they are able to pull hard enough to separate the silicone off the horn and then they can mount it traditionally and put it back on. Now people may argue that, but this was the easiest, fastest method for me to go. Make sure you fill your pig tusks and anything that could potentially split as bone, fill it. And I used two cases of silicone putting everything together and um, it turned out beautifully. All right, moving along. So I got the pigs all put together. That was an easy one to get out of the way. There was like seven pigs. The warthog came over beautifully. I didn't have to reboil them. It was the best animal that came back. Now this particular kudu, I show you here how there's a little damage on his nose. That wasn't done in the cleaning process. This kudu got shot and bailed off a big ridge and fell in face first to a pile of rocks and damaged that skull. Every horn is drilled. I was not expecting that. In the States, that's a huge no-no. It may just be commonplace in Africa. <clears throat> I just can't imagine drilling through a horn like that. But I think it's a cultural thing, right? It's, uh, I found that the animals are really, really hardy in Africa, like super tough. But the bone structure of the animal is not like ours. Like our antlered animals, their bone structure for equal age and size just twice as tough. The horns are strong, the horn core is strong, but the whole head itself is just brittle. <clears throat> and I think it takes so long for these to cure up that they just get put in those big sink pots and they just get overcooked <clears throat> really, really bad. <clears throat> So I'm just siliconing them on like that and then I'm storing them upside down so they have weight on them. Like that. And tomorrow they'll get a wash. There's no way I could reboil these skulls. They're just too beat up. So my idea from the beginning was to match up the horns, silicone them or get them re-adhered on, and then make each one of them one by one look beautiful. Now this Impala, when they had boiled with the color, I'm assuming, or put it in the color, it bleached out uh, a little bit of the horn at the base there. So I'm just using regular old traditional shoe polish. I just went over to CVS Pharmacy and grabbed this and just kind of sponge it on, try and keep it off the skull, let it dry, and then once it's kind of blended the colors together, I'll give it a coat of mop and glow and it'll be beautiful. There wound up being about a dozen animals total that had super strong bone structure that I could reboil and wanted to. The first one here is a big Elan bull. The other is the bush pig. And then I wound up having to redo the heart of beast, which is one of the first ones you saw me unwrap with all the bugs. They really needed some love. And then I did the dusty, the monkey, um, and, and several others, some spring bucks and things like that. But same old process. If you've seen anything I've ever done, what I'm doing here, because it's already clean, is I'm bringing 40% by volume liquid peroxide and water, a 50-50 mix of both of those two. I'm bringing it to a boil and then shutting it down, rinsing it clean, 
and letting it sun dry. I don't mean to be redundant, but this is the number one question I get. Here's a look at the mix and just how I do it. I don't measure it out, I just wing it. A batch that's 70 30 won't foam. 50 50 will foam, but it acts faster. Most of these animals won't take a second boil. They're beat up really bad. They go in those big sinks and big troughs, and they just get they get cooked almost to nothing. I got about four or five animals that can take a reboil. Uh, that gems buck is big and heavy. It was oily, so I got it cleaned up. The bush pig, same thing, just tough. And then I'm gonna try this kudu, which was a deadhead that we found. Uh, other than that, I'm gonna get this to a, a boil. I'm going to turn it down to it's just simmering hot, and then I'm going to give every skull a quick dunk and rinse. And then uh, once that's done, I've already got horns on, I'm going to mop and blow them, and that safari redo will be done. Critters and critters. So this wound up being the worst skull in the whole bunch. This came in wet, um, and then I don't know what the red is from, and it was pretty buggy. It was dead, but it was pretty buggy. Um, so my guess is it's something, you know, on a heart beast, that horn can't come off. Like you see the mechanics of it, the sheath can't come off. So they're loose and clean inside, but my guess is there was some sort of moisture and it got shipped like this. See if I wiggle it, you can see all that old dead larva coming out of there. So I'm going to try and fix this coloration. It was all fuzzy and and you can see where this has already been glued back together. This actually might be a glue that counteracted. This light coloration here is from the peroxide mix or whatever they did to color it white. Came up here and bleached this horn. So we'll shoe polish that, try and get it white and mop and glue it. This one's got a little stink to it. Really, really brittle. Not much integrity left. You know you're getting it clean when it's starting to bubble out of the horn core. Just a quick note here, I don't think I've ever said it before, but you see how this skull is coming out and it's yellow. Don't use a wet skull as a reference for whiteness. You won't know true white until it's completely dry. Just like painting a wall, typically it dries darker. When you're boiling, it normally dries lighter. So this skull is very, very yellow, but when it dries, it dries beautifully white. This is a classic example of a deadhead. The hide was adhered onto the animal and all that oil soaked into the bone. So I have to extract all that color. And it doesn't look like it in the mix, but when it's all said and done, this kudu turned out beautifully. Are y'all still with me? I feel like we're all over the map here, but remember, we're just cleaning. Every one of these skulls is getting a tremendous amount of individual attention. So now that I've got the horns on, they're siliconed, I've been able to reboil most of the skulls that I could. I'm giving every skull a hot peroxide skloosh, just a good rinse just to get everything knocked free. And you will get some residue on the horns or the skull. Make sure you just wash that clean with the power washer. You want it to be dry with no calcification or grease or anything on it because once you mop and glow it, once you seal everything in, whatever's underneath there is gonna show through. I spent a tremendous amount of time on every single animal and although I'm not 100% pleased with the outcome, I know that the portion that I did was fantastic. 
All in all, I'm happy, but make sure you take that extra moment and wash off any loose stuff. I didn't even realize it till I started looking back at this film, but you can see that this nose piece had been re-glued. And however, maybe a little piece of wire or something got in the shrink wrap and you can see how it rusted that piece of bone. Don't be afraid to scratch or grind down a piece of bone in order to remove some color. I just take a knife, scratch that rusty mark out of there. Easy peasy. Every animal that came back, let's see if I can focus this bad boy. They drilled the horns. I wasn't gonna do anything with them, but I think I got no choice but to fill them, sharpie them, and then mop and glow it. I just think it'll be create a better product for the for the hunter that's getting them back. Um, this is just a two-part epoxy. I had this in the car. It's a tank repair. You can use any two-part epoxy. I'm just gonna cut it, fill those holes smooth it with a cleaner and then by the time I've gone around and done every horn and you can see how much is here then I can uh, then they'll be ready to mop and blow but everything now has been washed horns epoxy back on except for that one kudu up there and um, yeah I'll have to get to working on it One by one, I'm going to give them a, uh, a coat of mop and glow. I think this will make everything finished and beautiful. I love them on our antelope here in the States. So I'm going to put them on our antelope. Africa. I noticed today when I washed all these horns how nice they look wet. And this will this will give it that permanent kind of wet look where it's going to bring out any of the uh, the extra color that's in the horn like on that blessed buck those blessed bucks they have a bunch of light color in there it's going to bring all that out it's going to accentuate the darks just beautiful just brush it on i use these cheapy brushes because i throw them away if you start to see little pieces of your brush attaching to your skull, change your brush. One down. All right, just wrapping up our Africa safari cleanup video. Um, a couple of things I didn't address because I don't have a really good answer and I've had some of you ask, but there are animals where the horn doesn't come off the horn core. Cape buffalo, hartebeest, wildebeest, um, some of the big impalas, things like that where the horn core is set up so differently that it can't come off. And I don't know the exact process for cleaning that. I am going to do a dedicated video on that, but I've never run into it. I know it's a struggle and some of the odor issues that people have had with um, animals they don't come off I'll help you find a way to do that you could see on the blue wildebeest in the beginning of the video where they had drilled behind the horn and maybe injected it with something I'll get you a good answer but I don't want to address it here because I've never personally dealt with it and I don't want to mislead but here's a couple of my absolute favorite skulls from the trip that is a vervet monkey and this one 
is a Hyrax or a Dussy or a Rock Rabbit, same animal, but it just looks wild, man. I love them little critters. I'll pull the camera in, do a quick close up. Thank you, like always, for watching, and I hope the busy is behind us and we'll put out a whole bunch more film. Thank you again.